and she, I mean, you know, dogs don't lie, she, like, sat there for a second, and then she started going, <gasps> and then she jumped up and looked around like, like, the, <laughs> like, what was that that got me? I mean, it was the, and it happened so fast, like, under a minute, and I was like, okay, what's fixing to happen? Is she fixing to have a seizure or what? And, I mean, she, like, got up, and she was, like, looking around like something had just gotten a hold of her. And then, because um, she'd, been, she'd been whining at my side of the bed, and then um, she lay down to sleep, and that was it. It was like, oh, okay. I did it. I've done it the second time since then and got the exact same reaction. I mean, it was the same thing. It was like, where is that? What is that? What's got me? And then she just lays down and goes to sleep. It's crazy. <laughs> so what did you give her? Um, Digize, which is a, it's a oil combination, and it's for... Um, stomach cramping and digestive issues so anyway it worked on her um i actually bought it for charlie but so far we've used it more on coco many drugs are actually manufactured from petroleum waste products and re research shows that these products can actually clog the membranes of the cells making it harder for nutrients to enter the cells and water to enter and exit the cells this can lead to a myriad of problems, including fatigue, body aches, brain fog, etc. And that is a, that is a fact. So, um, essential oils clean the receptor sites of our cells so they can communicate with each other. Uh, they also have um, the ability to begin repair of actual of DNA. So, what of DNA? They, they actually have the ability to begin repair of DNA and, and correct some DNA. Um, you know, like if you have a cancer cell that has mutated. mutated. Yeah. Um, <coughs> they have protective properties in them, which are the plant's natural defense mechanisms, thus making them medicinal properties when we use them as well. Also, plants continuously mutate subtly to change with the need. So... What does that mean? That means, because you're, I don't know if any of you have thought of this, because I did. My first thought was, well, bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. Why can't they become resistant to these oils? I mean, why not? It happens all the time. Um, because essential oils are not just one compound. They're a myriad of, com I mean, they're, they're, it's very complex. Scientists cannot even figure out exactly what is in an essential oil. If they could, they'd try to make something like it, and then they'd market it, and then they'd put a patent on it, and then you know how that goes. Um, but because of, if you think about um, a plant slowly changing itself so that it doesn't, it, it can not be killed by a pesticide. I mean, for example. Now, on the far, at the farms, at, for young living farms, they don't use any pesticides or herbicides, so I'm talking about a non-young living plant that's being exposed to a pesticide. And eventually, the pesticide doesn't really work so well, or the herbicide doesn't work so well on that plant anymore. Well, the plant has mutated, you know? It's figured out how to get to not be killed by that herbicide. In the, in nature, it does the same thing. I mean, if a bug decides it really likes tomatoes, say oh, the hornworm, I mean, eventually the tomatoes would be decimated everywhere. If, but the tomato plant changes itself very subtly all the time, and so it's constantly able to live. Um, The, it does that with bacteria, it does it with viruses, it does it with fungus, it does it with microbes, and it's constantly changing. And because it's constantly changing, as the plants that we are getting from Young Living in the form of essential oils, the oils that they made 10 years ago, if they were to test them, probably would not be exactly the same oils as they are today because the plants have changed too. So there's never going to be a resistance to what you're trying to treat, <coughs> or not treat, but you're 
if you can, if you can um, fix something um, and just pretend like you're a plant. <laughs> anyway, um, there's there is another thing that is interesting. Um, And I'll be I'll be honest with you. This this is kind of kind of out there for me, but I didn't do very well in physics. I mean, I did well in physics, but I took it as a science <coughs> course, so physics was not my something I really enjoyed. But every living thing has a frequency. I have a frequency. A plant has a frequency. Um, everything has a frequency, and the essential oils actually do have a frequency. And I did cross reference this, and it is true. Um, but the higher the frequency, the healthier we are. When your frequency drops below a certain level, that's when you start getting diseases and illnesses, and um, you start to have it. You start being unwell. And there, are certain oils raise your body frequency just by inhaling them or. Um, applying them or ingesting them and um, your if you add a high frequency oil to your body virus bacteria cancers etc things that are a low frequency they can no longer survive in the higher frequency so um, it's that's an additional healing property beyond the fact that we're dealing with something that has antimicrobial properties or antiviral properties. Uh, rose oil has the highest frequency of any essential oil. Um, it's also one of the most expensive oils. It takes, I can't remember how many pounds of, like 20 pounds of rose petals to make a very tiny amount of rose oil. Coffee, on the other hand, has a lower frequency. I'm sorry, Robin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for you, Robin. Thanks. <laughs> Viruses lay dormant in our spines and will come out to play when your body frequencies get low enough. Um, they are like our spinal spinal fluid, or they in your in your spine, the nerves, in the nerves. Really. Wow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Unlike many essential oils, which are easily found in a grocery store, and you can go to, you can go to lots of different grocery stores. I mean, San, uh, not uh, Sprouts, Whole Foods, Central Market. Um, I think even Market Street has some now. Um, those are easily found at a grocery store, but they're not therapeutic oil. They're not therapeutic grade, and I don't care what anybody says. You need to be really, really careful because there's no guarantee. What, what is in those oils and if you're going to put something on your skin or if you get to the point where you're interested in ingesting the oils you better make darn sure you know what you're putting in your in your body because a lot of the a lot of the other companies use hexane and petroleum distillates um, which is really I mean they're, it's just not good it's um, you'll end up with bigger problems than you started with. <clears throat> so, truly therapeutic essential oils will have preserved the delicate compounds within that essential oil while in the plant. These compounds can be affected by where the actual plant was grown, the right uh, climate and geographic region, meaning you can't just take a frankincense tree and move it to Utah. It has to be grown where it is. Uh, the condition of the soil, were chemicals used, um, the types of fertilizer used, the altitude, the harvesting methods, the distillation process, how the oil was extracted, was extracted from the plant and bottled. Young Living owns their own farms, they, they, um, and they welcome anybody to come and visit them and to tour the facilities. Audrey's actually going to go see one um, in June uh, in Utah. So anyway, I'm going to be very excited to see what she has to say. Uh, they, but they don't use oil brokers. It's all internal. Um, oil brokers collect oils from various farms and then sell the oil with little quality testing. The distillation process, they're steam distilled in stainless steel chambers at low pressure and low temperature. 
anything above 160 degrees and it starts breaking down some of the structures within the oils and you start losing therapeutic benefit. So, um, you know, the peppermint is in the brownies, but it's only for flavor because it was at 350. So, <laughs> 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 anyway, um, Young Living only uses plant material that is free of herbicides and chemicals and chemicals can react with the essential oils during the distillation process to produce toxic compounds. Um, which is what I was talking about a minute ago with the hexanes and the petrochemicals. Um, the other thing is, of course, if you don't know that you're dealing with an organic farm, pesticides that are used on the plants are oil soluble, and so they're going to end up directly in the um, the bottle. So, like I said, don't unless you're darn sure, don't use them. Um, so there's you know there's a difference between a ten dollar bottle of lavender and a twenty three dollar bottle of lavender. Um, the Young Living tests their every batch, every single batch of their oils, and only 28% of all the oils are accepted and used for consumption. That means that 78% of their own oils are rejected. Um, they're not wasted. They're, they turn around and use what they reject as natural pesticides on the Young, young Living farm, So, um, which I think is pretty neat. There's this is the chart of how the oils run, um, and I, I'll just pass it around, but there's the lowest grade, and we are exposed to all of these probably every single day anyway, but if you're going to put them on your body for therapeutic purposes, or even for cleaning your hands, you probably want to, on the, you want to be at the highest grade. <clears throat> So, um, oils, 